you know, pray for me as I, you know, I always want to be a type of pastor. Uh, you know, if you've got something to say, say it. And uh, if I'm wrong, I'll admit it. And, uh, and I hope I always will be that way. And, you know, so if you've got something on your mind, tell me, you know. And if you think uh, you've got something that can edify the church, tell me. I'll let you say something. I'm not the head honcho here. Christ runs the church. And You're a good it, shepherd. You know, You're a good shepherd. well, I try to be. So I make mistakes, but, you know, but um, a shepherd can't have the, you know, this is my church. This is the way it's going to be. It's what I say. And if you don't like it, there's the door. That's, man, that's wrong. I was, I was raised by a great shepherd, and he had a saying that was wonderful and has worked all through my life. Is show me a man that does, doesn't make a mistake, and I'll show you a man that doesn't do anything. Amen. Amen. You know, we all make mistakes. We need to, we yep. need to recognize that with Christ's compassion yeah. um, and, and work in an orderly fashion. Amen. And we got to work together. Amen. You know, it's, it's a, yeah, you got to. <laughs> I, had a, I have a thing on my desk. Well, I don't have a desk in my library, but um, I have a plaque. If you, if you were come in when I was at Friendship, it said, show me a man who has wisdom. I'll show you a man who's made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> Same thing. Same thing. Yep. Exactly. Your, your examples in the Bible are from the prophets and everything and how God would bring the word and they would bring it to the people. Yeah. But, and if it's coming from God, any direction, it's going to be accepted because that spirit's going to be in everybody else anyway. Exactly. And so we, we would be on the same page. Yeah, exactly. And if there's division, then you would know as a shepherd, yeah. okay, this is... Let's you know reconsider what we're doing. Yeah, and like Mike and I watch that. If we see division, then we'll then we'll have a meeting. Him and I, and we'll say, okay, maybe we ought to bring it towards the church. Mm -hmm. Let the church talk it out. See what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes God allows division. Maybe we're maybe we're doing something wrong, or maybe he, even I've been in business meetings where it would be ninety. You know, take a vote, be 90, 99, and then one negative. You know what I do with that negative? I'll, I'll look at that and say, Lord, you know, are you trying to show me something here? Mm. I'm going to watch this negative that was made and see if it's a pattern that I, that I don't see. Because most of the time it's busy, it's usually 100%. So when I see negatives, I'm thinking, ooh, maybe God's trying to tell us something here. And he allowed it to go through. But you study scripture, God, God will take a church and, and allow it to have, you know, uh, his permissive will to be done, but it's not his will, right. totally. He'll allow Trish to go through his, oh, you want to go that route? It's wrong, but I'll let you do it mm -hmm. to, to show you something. That, that'll that happen to a church, okay? That's why it's important to be in God's will at all times, but sometimes God allows us to go through a permissive will. Okay, go ahead. You're going to learn through this, and then we do learn it and move on, you know? So it's our, really, our position as members of the church to make sure we're abiding Oh, that's the key. And we need to, well, I was with a friend yesterday, and he goes to a church, and he's upset with the church because there's someone that is very negative and very hostile, and, and he says, I don't want to go there anymore. I says, well, did you speak to that person? He says, I don't have that kind of personality. It's very hard for me to. you got to do it anyway. You have to do it anyway. Yeah, yeah, you got to. That means we have a responsibility yeah. if something is bugging us. We need to find out why and do something about it. And why most Christians don't do that. You know why they don't do it? They like the first step, but they don't want it to go to the second and third step. That's what they're afraid of. You know what the second step is? If you go to your brother and it's still not settled, then you bring a witness with you. They don't want to go that route. By the way, most Christians have that wrong. They say they bring a witness. Usually that, that Christian will bring a best friend or something like that. No. Uh, no, that witness in Greek means you bring a person that knows nothing about that situation at all. That witness goes in not knowing a thing, listens, and says, oh, I see what's going on here. Oh, that's good. That, yeah. You know why it's that way? Because you bring a friend in, they're going to take your side. <laughs> no, you bring a you bring a person that would be like an elder or 
or maybe some other a Christian that, that's spiritually mature, that can discern. And then, of course, the third step, if they don't agree, then you have to take it before the church, and that, that gets nasty. Yeah, I, I, I experienced that one time as a pastor, and I said, I never want to go through that again. Where nothing got settled, it went before the church, and boy, when it goes before the church, then all that sin is out. Well, I tried this, I tried that, they wouldn't do it, and then the church makes the decision, and whatever the church decides, that believer has to obey, they're put on church discipline, and they're ousted. Okay? But, what's sad about that, most churches say, good, he's gone. What does Galatians say? Now you take that brother and you try to restore him. You've got to restore him. You don't fellowship with him, First Corinthians. You don't fellowship with the church discipline. As a matter of fact, if you want to get, like I said, you want to believe the Bible, we're not even supposed to fellowship with disobedient Christians. We're to stay away from them. Because they'll bring you down spiritually. Yeah, and so what happened, when that happened, we put the, the person on church discipline, and I said as a pastor, this isn't over yet. It's really beginning, yeah. And so what happened, make a long story short, <clears throat> I met with him, <clears throat> and his wife went through uh, almost a year's counseling, and uh, they, they passed that counseling with me, I brought it before the church, laid it out. He went, confessed the whole thing, asked for forgiveness. The church says, welcome back. Amen. And they welcomed him back into membership. And when that was done, I cried. I said, I've never seen this done before. Wow. I said, church, I want to recognize, and I'm saying, listen to me. You've forgiven this man, right? Yeah. Don't bring it up ever again in front of his face. It's done. It's forgiven. It's over with. Let's move forward. Yeah, it was great. Revived the church. <laughs> it revived the church, man. So, uh, abiding in Christ means to continue in the word of Christ, know the truth. Also, abiding in Christ means that a person lets the word of God abide in his life. You've, as we read it, you've got to what? Let it influence your life. 1 John 2.14 says, I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong. And the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. You've got to let not only Christ abide in you, you've got to let the word of God abide in you. Amen? And what's that? Simply what you read, you obey. Okay? And by the way, I, I use 1 John 2.14 because there's different spiritual levels. God is only going to give you what you can handle spiritually. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's important. You, that's why it's important. Every year I, I, I give myself a spiritual inventory. How am I doing? <laughs> you know? And if I'm not doing well, then I got to, okay, Lord, what have I got to do to correct this? You should give yourselves a spiritual test every year. How are you doing? Did you grow more this year than last? We should be growing. And God's only going to give some, 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 I've, I've heard Christians all my life say, oh, I pray and pray and Lord, pastor, God just doesn't seem to want to, I said, maybe you can't spiritually handle it. And that's why he hasn't given it to you yet. Either that or we just reach our comfort level and we don't want to be uncomfortable anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that's a very good point. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, you can mark it down with, the, with, with, with Bethlehem Baptist Fellowship. In order for us to do even greater things for God, God's going to take us out of our comfort zone. He hasn't yet, but I tell you, He's going to. Yep. He's going to say, are you willing to step out <coughs> and exercise some faith? But mark it down. Mark it, it's going to happen. And that's a good test of our spirituality. Well, it's a good test of our gifts that the Holy Spirit yep. gives us. Yeah, amen. We're not using them. If we use them, we'll feel comfortable. Oh, amen. Right. Yep. Abiding is not passive. Right. You know, yeah. Active. Yeah. And, and this whole thing, you know, abiding in Christ, it also it's it's so important when, when Christians come 
to worship that they're right with God. If you're not abiding in Christ, you, re you realize you're wasting your time worshiping?